you walk away from I, a sister? I grew up, I grew up as knowing that we all don't know what really actually what color Christ was. That, that is a fantastic statement. Right here, you got a question for us. Do you know that your history is in the Bible? You never heard of it, right? You never heard our history? Yep. So what we're going through now is how our children were taken from us. When we look here, our children were taken from us here. The southern kingdom of Israel, the blacks. The northern kingdom of Israel was called the Hispanics or the Spanish-speaking people today, right? And um, these tribes right here. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Show me. So check it out, sister. We are the children of the Bible. The curses are all upon us. Our children were taken from us and sold to another people, and we were never able to get them back. As it happened then, it still happens today. We give our children to the education system. We give our children to their doctors, their vaccines, their medicines, right? But we have no power to control or say what happens to our children, do we? Now watch this, the uh, Lord is going to explain some more things. Go ahead, um, give me verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Curse shalt thou be in the city, and curse shalt thou be in the field. Now when you look around, sis, what's your name? Hope. When you look around, sister Hope, are we blessed in the city at all as a people? Right, we're the last, uh, last hired, the first fired. We're getting shot down. We're getting put into prison at phenomenal rates, right? So the Lord said, what will happen to us? Curse should thou be in the city, and curse should thou be in the field. The Lord said that we will be cursed in the city, and we will also be cursed in the field. Guess what fields we were talking about? Show the sister again. Watch this, Sister Hope. The Lord said we would be cursed in the city, and we would be cursed in the field. Now, slavery, was that a blessing or a curse? Definitely a curse. We were out there sun up to sun down every single day, working for them, pricking our hands, blood all on the cotton, being hung from trees, being spanked, hands getting cut off if we didn't uh, uh, provide enough. Does that make sense? Cursed in the city, cursed in the field, as we are today. Still got to pay the most taxes, still being put in prison over stupid charges. Does that make sense? All right, go ahead. And curse shall be the basket in thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of, th of thy body. So the Lord says, curse shall be our basket in our store. Now, as much as we fought for black rights here in America, tell me how many stores of ours do you see on this block alone? What? Yeah, that we own. None, right? Even you go to uh, Martin Luther King Street, how many stores do you see that belongs to us? None, right? It's usually the other nations. Go to verse 43. Look it up. Deuteronomy 28, 43. The, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So the strangers that is within us, because they're in our communities, let's look at the so-called white man, let's look at the so-called Chinese person, let's look at the so-called Arabs. They're in our communities, and it says that they will what? They should get up above thee very high. They're going to get up above us very high in our own communities. I was walking the other day in, in Tampa, in the hood, and it said Chinese food. What is Chinese food doing in our neighborhood? There was their store in our neighborhood. I didn't see, you know, our names on any other stores. Nothing like that. But guess what? The Bible says what? They should get up above thee very high. And that shall come down very low. And it says that we, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, will come down very low. Right. We don't own any of our own stores. In fact, we go to their stores to get water, to get food, right. to put uh, uh, their hair on our heads. Does that make right. sense? To go and buy their foods and bring it to our children. Right. That doesn't make sense, right? right. Now give me, uh, go ahead. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. Sister, Sister Hope, tell me how many banks do we own? None, right? How many banks do you see around here? Bank of America. You got all these uh, uh, well-known banks, and it says that they shall what? He shall lend to thee, 
and thou shalt not lend to him. Because the Lord took that power away from us when we kept when we stopped keeping the commandments. Right. Now we have to go to them. They shall lend to us, and we shall lend to him. Read. And we shall not lend to him. Come on. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So guess what? Now because we broke God's commandments, we he the our enemies are our head, they're over us. And they hate us and we shall be the tail meaning we're going to be the last to get any type of benefits we're going to be the last to be uh uh, uh thought about in any emergency right you look at our brothers over there in puerto rico you look at our brothers in haiti you look at our brothers in jamaica right. we're always the last to be thought about sister hope especially here in america right. all right now um, yeah. deuteronomy 28 48 uh start at verse 46 46 and they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder upon thy seed forever. So the scripture says that they, which is talking about these curses, shall be upon us for a sign and a wonder. Now, Sister Hope, that sign right there says family dollar, right? What is that for? Like, why is it there? Right, to show us where the store is, right? So the sign, the curses are supposed to show you where the children of Israel are, who they are. Go ahead. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So these curses would be upon us because we did not serve the Lord our God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Come on. For the abundance of all things. So Sister Hope, for the abundance of all, because I, 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 you got to get this. You got to get this. What happened is we ruled the earth for over a thousand years. Did you ever you ever heard of the dark ages? That belonged to us. We ruled the earth for over 1000 years. That's right. As a matter of fact, this guy right here isn't even what Jesus Christ looked like according to the Bible. You know that, right? What does Christ look like according to the Bible? The second The second one, right? Now you tell me how many people know that? That you know that Christ was a black man. You don't know that, right? Now we're gonna get it out the Bible, all right? And then we're gonna come back to the curses to show you that this is our book. Then we're gonna show you why they changed it, all right? Read. Revelation chapter one, verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God. So John bear record of the word of God. And he sent John to show the so-called servants of God. So if you're a servant of the Most High God, you would really listen to the words of the Most High God. Watch right, this. Right, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and, all, and of all things that he saw, blessed is he that readeth, and that hear the words of this prophecy. So he said of all things that he saw. So John is about to write in this book the record that he bear of Jesus Christ that he saw. All right, go to verse 14, or go ahead. Verse 13, and in the midst of the seven candlestick, one like unto the son of man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So he looked behind him and it was one like the son of man. Now, John walked with Christ, all right? And he said it was one like the son of man. So he had to know what Christ looked like to say he was like the son of man. Verse 14. His head. His head. Jesus Christ's head. Read. And his hair. His beard. The hairs on his beard. Read. Were white like wool. So it was white in color and woolly in texture. Jesus Christ is not a so-called white man. Jesus Christ is a black man. Read. Wait, sister, why are you leaving? You said you knew that he was a black man. What's wrong with this message? Ain't nothing wrong with the message. So why you walk away from us, sister? I grew up, I grew up as knowing that we all don't know what really actually what color Christ That That is a fantastic statement, and I'll show you that we grew up like that because we were taught like that since slavery. The Bible just said that he saw, he bear record of what Christ looked like. And now he's writing what Christ looked like. The reason we are in this condition today is because those who want the power, sister. Hold on, you come come around here. We'll show you. We'll show you. 
This is the King James. This is Revelation, the newest you can go in the New Testament. He's gonna give you. A, he's gonna show you right here. It's been in our Bible for over 400 something years. Read it again. Um, tell us when you get there. We're gonna start at verse 14. Yes, sir. Yep, Revelation 1, verse 14. All right, we're going to read it again. Come on. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Christ's hair was white in color and woolly in texture. Now, who have woolly hair on the face of the earth today? What type of people have woolly hair? Black person. That's right, sister. Right. Black people, the Negroid race, right. read as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay, so there's more on this. Watch this, read. And his feet. So now it's talking about Jesus the Christ. His hair was woolly, and his feet is going into the description of his feet. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now, Sister Hope, what color is brass? When you look at brass. What color is it? Is it a lighter complexion or a darker complexion? It's dark, right? So brass is a derivative of brown. So his feet was like in color to brass. What? As if they burned. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. So sis, if you burn anything in a furnace, what color would it come out to be? It will come out to be black. Not just black, but super black. Christ is a black, black, beautiful man from the tribe of Judah. All right, sister, I got another question for you. Who taught us this image right here? And why do we know it today? Okay, so was this a hard message for you to receive? That Christ is actually a black man, that he has woolly hair. And that he's coming back for our people. That's right. He's coming back for the 12 tribes of Israel. His people. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Nobody else. That's what the whole Bible is about. That's the good news. Because imagine it. We're the lowest people. We're at the lowest estate. Don't you think we're the ones that need the good news? Right. What, what the other nations need good news for if they run and everything? They export, import. Start wars, stop wars. Right. Yeah, who do they need to be saved by? Right. They can save themselves. Right. But we can't, sister. You see what I'm saying? This is the good news of the gospel that you are from the tribes of Israel. Right. Do you see yourself on this sign? What what is your name? Look on the right side. What is the name that you uh, that you have right now? Or on the left side, what do they call you? American black. So then you would come from the tribe of Judah. American blacks is from the tribe of Judah. Now, sis, we went over the description of Christ, right? Who else do you think in history, the greatest man in history, ever came from the tribe of Judah? I'm going to show you. We've been having this book for over 400 and something years. I'm glad you sisters are listening to the greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth. We're going to see that he came from the some the same tribe that you so-called blacks come from. Right. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evident that our Lord sprung out of Judah. And our Lord what? Sprung out of Judah. It so it says that it is evident that our Lord Jesus the Christ sprang out of Judah. Christ comes from the same tribe that you so-called black African Americans come from. You carry the same direct bloodline as Jesus Christ. The super black man with super woolly hair. That's your Christ. He's coming back for you, sister, but we got to come back to our laws, our statutes, and our commandments. Let's see what the ancient Jews really look like. Sister, do you know what the, who the who the Jews the Jewish people are over there in uh, Israel today? Are they the real Jews? They not? You don't know, right? Watch what the Bible says, because a lot of people say Jewish. Now, come a little bit closer. Come a little bit closer. So if I say my pants are blackish, are they all the way black or just kind of black? They black. Kind of black. But if I say they blackish, are they like all the way black or kind of black? Right, so I was, there's, you got black and you got black-ish. You got the Jews 
the true Jews, and then you have Jew-ish. The so-called people, uh, the so-called Jews over there in Israel today, they say they're Jewish because they know that they're not the true Jews. But today we're going to show you who the true Jews are according to the Bible. Read. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. So it says, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. Why are we in languish, and why are we mourning? Because our leaders in the community, they are black unto the ground. So it says, Judah, they're what? They are black unto the ground. So the true Jews of the Bible are black, just right. like the ground is. Guess what? The true Jews of the Bible are black. That's right. So guess what? You so-called African Americans, you are Jews according to the Bible. Yes, and you have the same blood as Jesus Christ in your veins. Right. Jesus ain't no white man, I'm sorry to tell you. Right. But Christ is coming back for the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Let's see why we disconnected from our history. All up. right, because we've had a rich history all throughout our life. We thought that, we've been switching it up. We thought one minute that we were uh, happy Kwanzaa. Yeah. Say again? We thought, they thought we was... Uh, we was black. We thought we was black. We were Negroes. We was Negroes. We was colored. All right. Now we African American, Afro American, Afrocentric. All these names, but the children of Israel. Right. Read. Seventeen four. Uh, seventeen. Yep, yep. The book of Jeremiah, chapter seventeen, verse four. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So the Lord said that you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans would discontinue from the heritage which I gave thee. So if God isn't a liar, then guess what? The heritage that you're carrying today is not yours. Right. The Lord said that you would discontinue from your heritage that he gave thee. Come on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. To serve thine enemies. Young brothers right here. Have you ever heard of slavery? So the Lord, the people that we were uh, serving in slavery, are, there, are, are they our friends or our enemies? Enemies. So guess what the Lord just said here? Read it all the way from the top. And thou, even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So the Lord says that he gave us a heritage, right? Read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies, thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. So where did we serve slavery? Was it here in America? We served in America, right? So the Lord said that we would serve our enemies here in America. Now, how do we get over here, young brothers? If you got questions, let me know too, all right? How do we get over here to America? Was it by plane? Did we walk? Did we swim? How did we get here? By walking? All right, give me another one. By boat. Now, was it a big cruise? Was it fun? Or what type of boat was it? Like a what? Like a super big boat, right? A slave ship, cargo ship, that held a lot of our people as slaves, right? Now, did you know that that history is in the Bible? Watch this, sisters. Our history of slave ships is actually in the Bible. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships Now, I know that we have a lot of church going people out here And we know that the first time we came out of Egypt We never went back in But the Lord says that he will bring us into Egypt again But this time it's going to be with ships So first, let's see what the word Egypt means Let's get it the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So the Lord just said that the house of Egypt, or that Egypt is synonymous, the same thing as the house of bondage, right. which means slavery. Right. So all that Egyptology, all that Greek Egyptology and all that stuff, guess what? It's still slavery. Right. That's what the Lord says. Go back. Bring it up. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So, young brothers, the word Egypt, what does it mean? We just went over it. What? It means slavery. The, read it again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. 
I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Your turn. What does it mean? Egypt, house of what? Bondage, which means slavery. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Slavery? Again with ships. So he said that we would go into Egypt again. This time we're going to be with ships. And once we get there, read. By the way, we're all by speak unto thee. So the same way he said that we would go into, uh, that the way, same way he wrote it in the Bible is the same way that it actually happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. So it said we would see it no more again. Now I got a question. Where is our homeland? Where is the motherland for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Anybody know? By show of hands, where is the motherland? Do you young brothers, do you know? Where's the motherland? Because what we've been taught was that the motherland was Africa. Right. Right? We thought that we're uh, all Africans, all Egyptians, all Canaanites, but the Lord says he put a difference between us and the true Africans. Read. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So Israel, Jerusalem, is the true motherland of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And you were taken from your homeland and sold as slaves here and in South America and all across the world. The Lord said that happened to you. It wasn't Africans selling Africans. It was Africans selling God's chosen people, the Israelites. That's right. Read. Bring it out. Deuteronomy 2868. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way we're off, I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. So he said that we would not see our homeland again, which is Jerusalem. Israel, that's the true land. America is not your home. Read. And there. And there, once you got off those slave ships here in America, South America, Central America, everywhere else, read. You shall be sold. You shall be what? You shall be sold. Oh. Unto your enemies. So the Lord said that you so-called blacks and Hispanics would be sold unto your enemies. Friends don't sell friends. Right. Friends don't put chains on friends. Turn it around. Friends do not do this to friends. This actually happened to us. Our history is in the Bible. The whole Bible belongs to you, young brothers. All right, read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies uh -huh. for bond men, for slave men, and bond women, and slave women. And no man shall buy you. That buy you is an old Quaker word which means redeem. It means to redeem you from your situation that you're in. So as hard as Martin Luther King tried to redeem us from the situation that we're in, he just couldn't do it. As hard as uh, so darn the truth tried to redeem us from certain situations, guess what? Couldn't do it. Rosa Parks couldn't do it. Marcus Garvey could not redeem us from the situations or the curses that the Lord put us in. Right. That we put ourselves in by not keeping God's commandments. Right. The only person that can save us from the conditions that we put ourselves in is who? The black Messiah with super woolly hair. Right. Your Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.